Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a video. Today, I just want to kind of like talk about some stuff, go over some stuff, talk about what's new, what's what's happening with the new stuff. So, the first things first is this motor in front of me is a 5.3 Vortec. It came out of a 2001 uh, Sierra GMC. Got out of the junkyard for 340 block, 40 bucks, 40 bucks. And uh, here it is right here. This is this is the motor. Of course, it's it's not just the block. I have the whole thing. There's all the fun stuff and boom, more fun stuff. And then in that box right there, there's even more fun stuff. <clears throat> Anyways, with this motor, um, it's almost completely stripped. There's just a couple little things like that and the sensor and those bearings and the cam bearings and that plug and you know just a few little things that I need to take off the motor before it's a hundred percent bare block and once it's a hundred percent bare block then I'm going to get it magnafluxed but of course I can't do that until it is a hundred percent bare anyways but yeah that's that's the the 5.3 Vor Vortec the LS based motor um, Cast block, junkyard motor, make it work. Hoping like 500-ish horsepower. And I'm not using any of the stock 5.3, like the heads and the cam and that stuff. I want to get... That scared me. I want to get a real, like, good cam. I want to get LS1, true LS1 heads. The crank's going back in. I might get new pistons, which are in this box. I don't know yet. <clears throat> Anyways. So since we talked about the motor that's going in this, I want to talk about this thing right here. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled program. Hey, backyard, come on, what are you guys doing? Backyard. Okay, so since I talked about the engine that's going in this, the 5.3 Vortec, I want to talk about this car. Well, that was scary. <gasps> so here's a little brief interior run over. All stripped, like completely stripped. That's the um, where the heater core used to go. And then, like back here, is a bunch of interior crap. Nothing too important. Something just fell. <clears throat> so with this car, with this Camaro right here, it's like I love this car. It's it's such a a cool car to have. But I got so many plans, and my plans change, like, every day. It's like in kindergarten, your friends, that's how this car is for me. Every day it's something new. Um, so, I've like a, I'm have like fighting with the battle in my brain of do I want to just get it running, just slap it together, make it quick and dirty and so I can drive it, or do I want to do it proper? And I'm leaning more towards doing it proper, because right now it does not run with the current 327 small block, which is out of a 68 Camaro. Mailman's looking at me weird. Anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, 327, and then it's a three-speed manual, this thing right here. It's the jankiest transmission I've ever in my life messed with. It, this thing came out of a 76 Camaro with a straight six. I believe it was like a 250 straight six or something like that. Whatever the straight six that comes in the Chevys. So, yeah. The three-speed, I put this three-speed in here because it was an automatic car. It was originally when I bought it, it was an automatic car with a 307. And now it's a 327 with a three-speed manual. I've driven it a couple times with this manual. But it's so ridiculous. It's just absolutely, like, it gets stuck, like, 
Okay, so here is the here's the the transmission. That's the gear pattern right there, which is ridiculous. First of all, second of all, I don't have my keys, so I can't actually shift it because it's stuck in in reverse. But from reverse down to first, which this is not first, it's still in reverse because no key steering lock crap going on. But yeah, so you'll go down, you'll put it in first, no problem, nothing, it works fine. Let off the clutch like you know your normal normal car. You do all your fancy footwork here, like that, and then you start going, and you go to shift it into second, which is a little bit down over and that way. I'm not sure why I'm explaining that. You can see it right there. Anyways, you go to shift into second, it gets stuck in neutral, and then you're holy hell, bug just flew into my dome. Get out of here. There it is. You see it? It's a skater. Interesting. Anyways, <clears throat> you go to shift into you, okay. You're you're let's say scenario here. You're at a red light. Hey, uh, let's just pretend that's a Mustang. Mustang pulls up next to you, gives you a friendly rev. You know, a little. <laughs> and then you're like, oh crap! I'm in a Camaro. I'm not about to let no Mustang boy beat me. So you shift it into first, and you're ready. You're revving up. Blum 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 blum. You got your clutch in, right? I don't want to push it in because it's gonna tear those wires right there. But you got your clutch in. You're 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 on the gas. You're ready. You're 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 warming those tires up. You're getting a little smoky. And then light turns green. Pop the clutch. Floor it. And what does this thing do? It revs up. You won't go to shift it. You clutch in. You go to shift it in a second. Boom! Stuck in neutral. Can't shift. Won't even go back into first. Won't go into second. Won't go into third. Won't go into reverse. It's stuck. So now you have to coast to a stop. Turn the vehicle off. Put it back into first. Turn the vehicle back on for it to be back into first. So yeah, it gets stuck in neutral is what I'm trying to say. That was my whole story mode there. Um, So it sucks. Yeah. I mean, this tra it's old. It's like a factory 76 trans. It's probably never had a reboot. I think the fluid has only been changed once. I didn't own the 76 Camaro the whole time. I only owned it for like, I don't know, three to five months. I can't really remember. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, this is some junk. And then uh, back to the interior. So I stripped everything because full race car. It's getting the LS power plant. LS based. I want to stress that because it's not a true LS motor. A true LS motor is an aluminum block, mine is an iron block, but it's still built the exact same way, therefore it's an LS based motor, not an LS motor. I think it's like an LQ4 or LT4 or LQ1 or some, something along those lines. I don't know, I don't care. Anyways, um, yeah, so I've been going through the last couple days, I've just been going through all the wires and seeing what I truly don't need, and I've stripped a good bit of wires. Because, like, I want this thing to be a simple, fast, reliable race car. Therefore, I need as little wire as possible, like this. For instance, this. I don't know what this plugs into. I didn't unplug it from anything. Actually, you know what? Just kidding. I lied. I do know what this goes into. This goes into the e-brake right here, which this is coming out anyways, because that's some junky crap. I want an e-brake. Either a proper e-brake, or, you know, one of the skid brakes as they're as they're called but yeah this is gonna get the LS motor a T56 which is like a bummer cuz T56s are hella expensive LS T56 proper e-brake or skid handbrake so that's gonna happen door panels I need to take those off and do some work I wanna get a straight steering column cuz this is one of those freaking tilty ones which blows cuz like I don't want tilty steering wheel I ain't about all that jazz <clears throat> so yeah that's what's going on with the the Camaro here anyways uh, yeah I gotta get some stuff done with this car it's pretty lit I shall show you the engine cuz you know Camaro's also another reason I'm ripping all the interior out because there's a rat 
in this car, like, that wasn't there. And, like, you know, the ground is just right there. Like, literally, it's not even very far. It's, like, to there. It's... Oh, gosh. Oh, my hand stuck. Just kidding. It came to, like, mid, like, wrist, a little bit up. So this thing is freaking low, and that... Look, there, there's, a, there's another example right there. Like, the ground is right there. So, any mouse can just hop on in here whenever they be feeling it. And, like, back there is a bunch of leaves. This thing was vacuumed out, like, I don't know, two months ago, and I didn't put leaves in the car, so... Uh, good on you, nature. Good on you. So here is that beautiful 327 that I talked about, and I just put these spark plug wires in, like, uh, two days ago, I think. Didn't realize they were cut to fit. Like, I had to crimp those ends on over there. Didn't realize they were cut to fit, so they're, like, way too long and loopy, like, both sides. Which is, like, you know, it's something interesting. Uh, yeah, 327, like I said, small block. It's not 100% stock. It's, like, kind of there. It has a... It's board 30 over, it has flat top pistons, high rise cam. Like this thing lopes like a mother. So that's pretty sick. But I've spent so much money on this freaking thing. Oh, also, speaking of all the wires I've pulled out, like look at this. This little box goes to right there, right there, you can see it. Which bolts to the back of the fuse box inside. And like look at all these wires I cut. Were wires that I did not, that literally went nowhere. Like nothing was connected to them. And that's like, that's a bunch. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Nine wires I cut out of the engine bay because they didn't do anything. So, yeah, that is, that's like what's going down with my 71. Get out of here. Get out of here. These people be creeping. They're like, and they just stopped. And I was like, oh, hell. And then they're like, I'll see you guys next time, and remember, mangoes don't like to be upside down. I'll see you guys, have a good one.